Good day, this is Job Aguas, and welcome to my lectures in philosophy. Today I'm going to talk about one very important philosopher and saint who have influenced my life and my career as a professor of philosophy. This is Karol Wojtyla, or John Paul II, one of the most impactful and influential figures of the 21st century. So in this presentation, I will be talking about his life and his thoughts. But I will focus first on his biography and influences. Karol Wojtyla, or known today as John Paul II, or Saint John Paul II, is the 265th Pope in the Roman Catholic Church history. Wojtyla is a man of great charm, a man of many interests, and a deep and creative thinker, and most of all, a man of attractive personality and a distinctive philosopher. According to one writer, he seems larger than life. There is in him a sensitivity in a charm that captured all because it seems to flow from so good and intelligent a heart. His gracious gestures were not studied and calculated, but flowed from a personality that had brought everything together well. The range of his interests seems hyperbolic. He was an athlete. He played a fair guitar. He knew so many languages. He was an actor who loved Shakespeare and he wrote good plays himself. And of course, he was also a poet. Above all these special talents, he is fully self-possessed and secure per secured person. Everything in him, everything is well integrated into his being. He is regarded as an intellectual pope in the sense that not all popes were been or have been intellectuals before him. He did not only teach a little philosophy, but he's a world-class philosopher, and he excelled in ethics. The style of his scholarship is not traditional and narrow. He is best known as a phenomenologist, and even respected by in Marxist intellectuals in his own country. Critics who know his work well consider Vitiwa as one of the major philosophers of our time. He is a precise and careful analyst. He is a creative and imaginative thinker in handling a certain contemporary problem. So, Wojtyla was born on May 18 in a small town of Vadovice, located in the southern Poland, approximately 40 miles southwest of Krakow. Vadovice is in the foothills of the Beskidi Mountains, which outline the boundary between Poland and the former Czechoslovakia. Karol Wojtyla was baptized in the parish church of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He also received his first communion and confirmed and celebrated his first mass in the same parish church. He was baptized Karolus Joseph on June 20 and was confirmed on May 3, 1938. He was ordained priest on November 1, 1946. He was made bishop on September 28, 1958, and Metropolitan Archbishop of Krakow on January 13, 1964, and he was elevated cardinal on June 26, 1967, and he was elected Pope, Pope John Paul II, on October 16, 1978. Now, the parents of Karol Wojtyla, Karol Wojtyla Sr. and Emilia Kaksorowska were natives of the village of Keti, likewise in southern Poland. And they belonged to the lower middle class, the agrarian background of the wife, his mother, combining with the traditional service, civil service of the husband. Karol Wojtyla's father was a sergeant in active service with the Polish army. 
while his mother was a devoutly religious woman whose influence on her son is certainly salutary. The eldest son of Carol Sr. and Emilia was Edmond, who was born on August 27, 1906. A daughter was born some years after Edmond, who was named Olga. However, she died in infancy. Carol was the youngest of three children born to Carol Sr. and Emilia, and he grew up very close to his brother Edmond, whom he fondly called Mundek. His father was a man of high discipline who demanded conscientiousness, diligence, and obedience of his sons. He was a lieutenant in the Polish army until he retired on pension with the rank of captain around 1927. When he retired from the military service, he worked as a clerk at the regional draft center while his wife uh, looked after Carol and his older brother Edmund. Senior, uh, Carol Sr. Was, was generally referred to in Vadovice as the captain, a gentleman of the old school, and a man of Granite integrity, whose army career can be described as a combination of intelligence, diligence, dependability, and honesty. Carol Vitti's mother died on April 13, 1929, before Carol turned nine years old. She had been often ill and died of kidney failure and congenital heart disease. She was 45 years old and was buried in the parish church three days later after a funeral mass. Needless to say that both boys and their father took the loss very hardly. Four years later, another tragedy happened. Edmund, who was a physician, was infected with scarlet fever from one of his patients in the hospital in Bielsko, and died on December 5, 1932. He was just 26 years old. This greatly affected the young Carol and, of course, his father. This unexpected death of his brother must have struck the young Carol harder than by the death of his mother. The father, trying to compensate to the young boy for his painful loss, often took him to the mountains passing on to the young Carol his own love for the countryside. Together, they went on hikes across the small Beskid and Tetra mountains. Carol attended grade school in his hometown from 1927 to 1931, and he was better known as Lolus or Lolek. Regarded as a very good boy with many talents, he was the first in his class. His piety made everyone believe he would be a priest. Most of all, he was devoted to the veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Blessed Mother. From 1931 to 1938, Karol Wojtyla was a student at the Marcin Vadovica School in Vadovice a gymnasium or a high school and college combined. He was one of the uh, brightest students in the classical humanistic curriculum and he passed the baccalaureate maxima cum laude on May 27, 1938 as a class valedictorian distinguishing himself especially in language and literature. After completing his grammar school education, the father and son moved to Krakow in 1938. Wojtyla Sr. and had his son Karol enrolled at the university because of the boy's talent and interests. In August 1938, he started his undergraduate studies at the university. And in June 1939, he passed his school levels examination 
with flying colors and later enrolled in the Faculty of Philosophy of the Jagiellonian University to read Polish philology. At the university, he continued to pursue his interest in drama and literature, which involved him in many school productions and organizations. Uh, during this year uh, at the university, Wojtyla joined a literary group and made his debut uh, on October 15, 1938, during a poetry evening. He also enrolled in drama classes and joined Studio 39, a student theater group. In 19 or in June of 1939, during the Festival of Krakow. Studio 39 gave an immensely popular performance of a comedy featuring Karol Wojtyla in one of the main parts. During his school years, Wojtyla was also affected by deep patriotic sentiments which associated him to the Renaissance. It is a national movement organized by the then professor of sociology at Lublin Catholic University, Stefan Witsinski who would later become the primate of Poland. The aim of this movement was the revival of the old Polish Catholic national spirit. Unfortunately, however, Wojtyla could only study at this university for a year and a half because the Nazis, who invaded Poland in 1939, closed the university and other institutions for fear of possible student demonstrations. Later, uh, the Second World War broke out on September 1, 1939. And then in November of 1939, the Jagiellonian University was officially closed down by the Nazis following the arrest of the senior faculty by the Gestapo. Wojtyla was forced to interrupt his studies, was forced to stop his studies, and to avoid forced deportation uh, by the Germans uh, to work in Germany, Wojtyla had to work, find a work in a hurry. So, uh, from October 1940 until August 1944, he worked as a laborer in a quarry in the Solvay chemical plant. As soon as the Second World War broke out, Wojtyla was immediately active in the underground. At 19, he became a member of the, the Home Army, a military type organization of national resistance. He was a courier carrying messages, distributing resistance literature, participating in the underground canal that uh, hid es escapees that enabled them to reach the West. He was also a member of the unit that obtained technical details in actual pieces of the German V-1 and V-2 missiles, which were being tested in Poland at the time. <clears throat> so he was instrumental in forwarding the information uh, in this regard to London. Now, as if the interruption of his study and the need to work with his hands were not enough, Karol Wojtyla was struck by another sorrow. On February 18, 1941, his father died of heart attack, leaving him the sole surviving member of his immediate family. Years later, reflecting on his early life, he would say, I was not at my mother's death. I was not at my brother's death. I was not at my father's death. At 20, I had already lost all the people I loved. He was spared nothing as if personal difficulty was simply part of his life. Deprived of the comfort of a family, um, he shared difficult times with a society terrorized by the Nazis. But he did not stop his literary and theatrical work. Together with his friends, 
He organized secret concerts and drama performances, recitals, and foreign language classes in private houses. They set up a, a clandestine uh, theater company, which managed the stage 10 plays before the end of Poland's wartime occupation. In 1942, Karol Wojty was forced to give up his job because of his active part in the heroic anti-Nazi resistance movement. So he had to look for a hideout and found it eventually in the basement of the Archbishop Palace of Cardinal Sabieha. Wojtyla would come out of hiding only at the end of the war in 1945. Upon the suggestion of a certain priest, Wojtyla requested the cardinal to be accepted in the seminary being secretly organized by the cardinal. So in October 1942, he joined the undercover Archdiocesan Seminary in Krakow and enrolled in the clandestine Faculty of Theology of the Jagiellonian University. He was accepted together with some six or seven young men into the Cardinal's residence and there they pursued their clerical studies clandestinely. In Atis closed not only the universities but also the seminaries because of the persecution of Polish priests by the Germans he was forced to keep his vocation a secret for the first two years, especially after what they call the Black Saturday, when Gestapo arrested nearly 7,000 priests. He stayed in the Ulika Tanyeka and continued to work as before. So from 1942 to 1945, Witiwa was constrained to spend the day as worker while attended theology classes at night. As a young seminarian in wartime Krakow, Karol Wojtyla distributed newspapers in the anti-Nazi underground and won himself a place on the list of wanted persons. He was an active member, as we have said, of the Polish underground movement, movement Onia the ideological educational branch of the social Christian resistance movement whose legacy was to preserve Polish tradition and culture while the Nazis were trying to annihilate their Polish tradition. During this period, he also assisted hunted Jews in finding shelter and, and faking identification papers. So for the last five months of the war from August 1944, until the Nazis were replaced by the Soviet army in January of 1945, he lived in fear. But meanwhile, he had plenty of time to mature in his philosophical and theological thought. While in the seminary, Carol held classes on the history of dogma. Now, after the liberation of Krakow by the Soviet army, the seminaries in Poland were reopened together with the other universities. Wojtyla was then able to continue freely his theological studies at the major seminary in Krakow. And he passed his last examination in August 1946, Maxima Cum Laude. And on November 1, 1946, at the age of 26, he was ordained priest by Cardinal Szapieha the Metropolitan Archbishop for the Archdiocese of Krakow. His initial Mass, first Mass was celebrated in the St. Leonard's Crypt in Vavel Cathedral. And Carl, uh, Cardinal Sapieha, knowing the intellectual potential of the new priest, strongly advised him to pursue in Rome advanced studies in theology and philosophy. So Father Karol Wojtyla, chosen from hundreds of possible candidates, arrived in Rome soon after his ordination in the fall of 1946. He enrolled at the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, the Angelicum, which was directed by the Dominicans, and he lived at the Belgian College. 
He stayed at the Angelicum from November 1946 until June 19, uh, 1943. And under the guidance of the famed French philosopher Reginald Garigou Lagrange and his scholar Luigi Schiappi, who would later become a cardinal and his theologian uh, later on, he completed his dissertation in theology entitled The Virtue of Faith in the Light or in the Thought of St. John of the Cross. The Light of Faith in the Thought of St. John of the Cross. And on June 14, 1948, he passed his doctoral exam and five days later defended his dissertation in second theology, obtaining the highest number of points in both uh, exam and defense. However, because he could not afford to print and publish his dissertation, which was a necessary requirement at the Angelicum, he was not awarded his degree. And before the end of June, he returned to Poland, and in November of the same year, he submitted an expanded text of his Angelicum dissertation to the Faculty of Theology of the Jagiellonian University in Krakow. And after passing the necessary exam, he finally received his doctorate in sacred theology on December 16, 1948. So, upon his return to Poland, he immediately served as pastor of Niegowicz, a small village south of Krakow. On, on July 28, 1948, he arrived at his first parish assignment, and he taught religious instruction to local children, celebrated morning masses, and assisted the parish priest. In the evenings, however, he continued his literary work, which he never gave up. He inspired the young people of the parish to organize an amateur theater workshop. Now, in March 1949, he was transferred to St. Florian's Parish in Krakow. And at St. Florian's, he established a choir for a Gregorian chant, which performed the Misa de Angelis, or the Mass of the Angels. He instilled his passion for the mountains in the young members of his choir, and um, they journeyed together through the gorse and the Beskid Mountains. They also organized kayaking trips in Masuria. So while doing his work as pastor, he also taught ethics at the Jagiellonian University, and then later on he would be uh, teaching ethics at the Catholic University of Lublin. In February 1951, as pastor of the parish, Wojtyla organized uh, a group of fewer than 20 people who began to call themselves Rudzinska, meaning the little family, who met for prayer, philosophical discussion, and uh, mission work for the blind and sick. Eventually, there were 200 people in a circle, which came to be called uh, Srodovitsko, meaning roughly Melu. Wojtyla also wrote a series of articles dealing with contemporary church issues in Krakow's Catholic newspaper, Universal Weekly. He also expressed his own literary and poetic gifts through poems and plays. Life under the communist rule and his pastoral responsibilities became the source of insights for his poems and plays. But of course, we know that they had a very tough, very difficult life under the communists. So these papers were published, uh, these poems and, paper and plays, however, were published under two pseudonyms, Andres Jovain and Stanislav Andres Gruda. He used these pseudonyms firstly to distinguish his literary outputs from his religious writings, which were published under his own name, and secondly, so that his literary works could be considered on their own 
merits. Like what Kierkegaard did using pseudonyms to publish his philosophical work. Waitiwa had to study to earn a second degree in philosophy in order to teach at the Jagiellonian University. And it was upon the suggestion of uh, Cardinal Sapieha that he worked for his second doctorate in philosophy. So in September of 1951, the, the new Archbishop of Krakow, uh, Cardinal uh, Archbishop Beyshak, ordered him to take a two-year sabbatical from his pastoral assignment to work on his habilitation thesis. And although quite hesitant, he took on the task. One of his former professors, Ignacy Riziki, suggested the topic on the ethical system of Max Scheller. Hence, Wojtyla wrote on the topic an evaluation on the possibility of building a Christian ethics on the principles of Max Scheller's system. From this endeavor, he was introduced into the system of phenomenology, specifically of Max Scheller. But Max Scheller was influenced by Immanuel Kant, and therefore Wojtyla had to work not only on the philosophy of Max Scheller, but also had to study Kantian philosophy. Wojtyla completed his habilitation thesis which was accepted by the Theology Department in November 1953 as a requirement for the degree of a docent, uh, an instructor. And in December of the same year, he presented a lecture on the topic, an analysis of the act of faith in the light of the philosophy of values. An analysis of the act of faith in the light of the philosophy of values. And it was accepted unanimously by the faculty, but the rector of the Jagiellonian University refused to confer the degree on Wojtyla because of some regulation of the communist government that forbids the university from granting degrees. This would be the last habilitation in theology of philosophy of the Jagiellonian University as it was closed by the communist government after 500 years of existence and activity. So for the second time, Wojtyla finished all the requirements for his degree, but he was not conferred with his degree. While working on his habilitation thesis, he came to know the renowned professor on medieval philosophy at the Catholic University in Lublin. And the professor suggested to him that he teach at the Catholic University of Lublin. So in October of 1954, the Dean of the Philosophy Department of Kuhl, uh, Jerzy Kalinowski, accepted Wojtyla in the faculty and assigned him to teach a course on the history of ethical doctrines. And in the academic year 1954 to 1955, he gave the first of his Lublin lectures entitled Ethical Act and Ethical Experience. In 1956, he assumed the Chair of Ethics at the Catholic University of Lublin, and in 1957, he was conferred a degree, a doctoral degree, in philosophy by the Catholic University of Lublin. On July 4, 1958, he was named Auxiliary Bishop of Krakow, and on September 28, 1958, he was consecrated at the Babel Cathedral in Krakow. This was the time when he started working on his most famous outputs, for which he became renowned among theologians, Love and Responsibility, which he wrote in a uh, 1960. And then his major philosophical work, The Acting Person, or Zuba Izin, in 1969. In 1962 and 1963, he participated in the works of the first and second 
sessions of the Second Vatican Council. On December 30, 1963, Pope Paul VI appointed him to the Metropolitan See of Krakow as its Archbishop, which was immediately followed by his consecration as Archbishop of Krakow on January 13, 1964. In November of the same year, he took part in the third session of the Vatican Council, and he was elevated to Cardinal on June 26, 1967. So, while taking part in the session of the Vatican Council, he received a private audience with the Pope. And they became uh, and became in close contact with the Pope the following years. In the following years, they worked together on the encyclical Humanae Vitae. And in 1976, Paul VI invited him to give the Lenten retreat in the Vatican. On September 19, September 29. 1978, John Paul I, the successor of the successor of Paul VI, died. In after just 31 days in office. On October 13, 1978, 111 cardinals gathered in the Vatican for another conclave to elect a new pope. And after three days of voting. On October 16, 1978, Karol Wojtyla became the first non-Italian Pope in 400 years, and he chose the name John Paul II. For the first time in the history of the Church, he held prayer meetings attended by representatives of all major religions, and established a dialogue with members of the Judaic religion. Often called the Pilgrim Pope, John Paul II made 100 overseas apostolic visits a number of times to the po to, a number of times to Poland. And under his leadership, John Paul II, the Polish Pope John Paul II, the Church achieved significant changes. He reformed the canon law in 1984. Compiled a new Catholic catechism in 1992, reorganized the, Rome, uh, the Roman Curia, published numerous encyclicals, carried out several hundreds of canonizations and beatifications. The most important messages of John Paul's pontificate are, res are respect for human life from conception to natural death respect for human rights in the working man's rights, the struggle for peace, opposition to totalitarianism, a new evangelization, and worldwide renewal, especially among young people. It is through his initiative that we are celebrating the World Youth Day. On May 13, 1981, a tragedy happened. He was severely wounded in an assassination attempt at St. Peter's Square, but he survived and recovered. Pope John Paul II, the charismatic and well-loved Pope from Poland, died on a Saturday, April 2, 2005, at 9.37 p.m. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you have learned something from the life of our beloved Pope, our beloved Saint, Saint John Paul II. Thank you very much for listening.